Okay then, let's recap what we've learned so far. Due to its location on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, Iceland has a lot of geologic activity. This energy from the Earth has been tapped into for heating, hot water, cooking, electricity, and, yes, even heated towel racks. But one of the most impressive uses for geothermal energy is its use in greenhouses. This has transformed a country that has little arable land into one that is actually exporting their crops to other countries. Besides tomatoes and cucumbers, there is so much energy underneath Iceland that tropical fruit can be grown as well. In the 1940s, an effort was started to see if bananas could be grown commercially in Iceland. But due to the plants taking more time to grow than bananas in South America, this effort was abandoned. However, bananas are still grown in Iceland. The largest collection being at the Banana Room at the Agricultural University of Iceland. So, the secret behind this impressive banana collection has finally been revealed. And unlike my magic trick right here, the secret is even more impressive than the banana itself. But there's still some unfinished business. First off, what about that quiz show? The largest banana producing country in Europe is Iceland. Some say that this is the largest collection of banana plants in yeah, Scandinavia. Absolutely. It, it, well, it was a few years ago, at least. But uh, someone is. I uh, I, no, I guess I guess it still is. I, I've heard uh, Europe, the the greatest producer of bananas in Europe in general, is in Iceland. But okay. um, that one, you're not you're not sure on that. Well, I did actually uh, say that once. Uh -huh. in an interview a few years ago, so it might have come from that. After the, winter, the interview, I was thinking, did I say Europe or did I talk about Scandinavia? Or... <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so, that was years ago, like long, yeah, long ago. Yeah, though, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I had forgotten about that, but thanks for yeah. reminding me. <laughs> so, I may have found the person that is responsible for this misinformation. And, you know what? It's an honest mistake, you know, a small slip up that unfortunately got on the internet and that's how the internet works. Misinformation travels very quickly. If you search online, what is the largest banana producer in Europe, you are mostly going to get articles that are perpetuating that same bit of misinformation. So let's set things straight. So what is the largest banana producing country in Europe? In third place, we have Portugal with 27,840 tons of bananas produced each year. In second place, France with 206,870 tons. And in first place, Spain. They produce a whopping 398,720 tons of bananas each year. This makes up about 60% of all of the bananas that are produced in Europe. However, there is a catch. In each of these cases, the bananas in question are actually produced on territories that are off the mainland. Portugal's bananas are produced in Madeira, France's bananas are produced in Martinique and Guadalupe. And Spain's bananas are produced in the Canary Islands. If you aren't interested in territories that are off the mainland, then the number one producer of bananas in Europe is Cyprus with 5,340 tons. But with Cyprus, there is another catch because although politically and culturally it is Europe, geographically, Cyprus is located in Asia. For the purists out there, the number one producer of bananas in Europe, geographically, politically, culturally, 
etc. That is Greece with 4,840 tons. So there you go. It's not a simple answer, but it's an answer. If you look deep enough, you can find people all around the world growing bananas in adverse conditions. There are bananas in Italy, Germany, the UK. Hell, there are bananas growing where I live right now in Queens. There are bananas growing where I grew up in freezing western New York. There are bananas growing in Canada. I think it's so fascinating when people fight against the odds in order to grow plants. And although Iceland is far from the number one producer in Europe, when you consider the cold, when you consider the dark, when you consider the lack of arable land, I would say that Iceland is the most impressive grower of bananas, not just in Europe, but in the world. Oh yeah, there's one other piece of unfinished business. Tasting the Icelandic banana. That's what I came here for, right? Well, that part wasn't going to be so easy. After visiting the Agricultural University of Iceland, my videographer slash girlfriend and I got back in the car with a bag of very rare Icelandic bananas. There was a problem though. These bananas were also very green. We only had seven days in Iceland and it would be illegal for me to take these on the plane back home. The feeling as we drove away from the university was bittersweet. I found what I came there for, but I was worried that they wouldn't ripen in time. For an entire week, my girlfriend and I traveled around one of the most beautiful countries that I've ever been to, all the while waiting for a banana to ripen. From icebergs, rainbows, ravines, lava fields, volcanoes. It felt as if the world was showing off to us. Got a mountain, got a glacier, got a double rainbow. <laughs> nice little field. Oh, stop. <laughs> I felt more aware of my place on this planet than I ever had. Things that I took for granted were turned on its head. The sun didn't set. The ground was hot. Natural pools boiled. The ground shot out steam, water, and magma. We drove across a landscape that felt like it was alive. It was beautiful, but also kind of intimidating. Like at any point in time, the world could just crush us. So, I have a confession to make. I have been traveling around the world in order to find fruit for a long time now. And several times in the past, I have claimed to go to a country to find only one fruit. I went to Bolivia in order to find the ice cream bean. I went to the Seychelles to find the Coco de Mer. I went to Finland to find cloudberries. But this is only half true. I did go to those countries with one big thing to find, but I knew that I'd find more along the way. Iceland was different though. This banana was the only fruit that I expected to make a video on. And honestly, when I booked my flight to Iceland, I didn't have permission yet to go to the university. I was lucky that they were so kind there and were able to give me a tour.
And when you think about it, the Icelandic banana is a Cavendish banana. The same kind that you'll find at supermarkets all around the world. I knew exactly what that banana was going to taste like the entire time. And you know what that banana is going to taste like too. So why was I so upset on day four when that banana was still green? Maybe I was projecting my emotions a little. It would have been a big gamble to book a flight to Iceland in order to find a fruit that I had doubts about finding. The truth is, I did not go to Iceland to find any fruit at all. In this case, the banana was just what I found along the way. I was there for something bigger. And I don't mean geothermal energy. The real reason why I was there had something to do with an engagement ring that I was hiding in my bag. I have to admit, I was extremely nervous about proposing, but you know what? Iceland made a great wingman. Every day we were shown such incredible sights. It wasn't without an ounce of fear, but every step of the way we were enchanted. It felt like the earth was trying to encourage me. Like, here you go buddy. Here's a rainbow to set the mood. And remember, I could kill the two of you anytime I want. So we just went down this little road here and up the path. And as you drive by, it just looks like a mountain. But when you get close to it, there's a crack in that mountain. And you can walk into the crack. This thing looks like it's going to eat us. Needless to say, I popped the question. On day seven, we got back to where we started, but we weren't the same. We had experienced so much during that short week, and my girlfriend was now my fiance. And we weren't the only ones that were different. That's right, that banana was finally ripe. Oh, that was a terrible segue. So on one sunny night, just hours before our flight back home, I ate a very special Cavendish banana. One that was grown by the number one producer of bananas in the most unlikely of places. I may not have gone to Iceland in order to eat a banana, but after such an incredible week, it was a great way to end our adventure. And what did that banana taste like? Well, all right, all right, let me tell you what this tastes like. It does taste like a Cavendish banana, but it tastes like a really good Cavendish banana. It also is so much better than a regular Cavendish banana that I'm kind of like wondering if this is either not a regular Cavendish banana, if it's like slightly different, or if the geothermal uh, energy or like how the uh, Iceland only gets so much light every, uh, every year, if that maybe affects the flavor because the flavor of this is stronger. It's got a little bit of a tartness to it, like the tartness of an apple, which you get in some bananas, but you don't usually get in a Cavendish. The peel of it is a little bit thicker and the uh, banana itself is a little bit more dense and it's a little juicier. 
So it is different. It's different than ones that you get in the supermarket. And I'm not sure if that's how it was grown or if it's just because it is a good quality banana. Either way, it's a good one. <laughs>